Hey there. <laughs> hey, Batula. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing super great. Uh, today we're here with Petula Guimaraes. Is that the, the right way to pronounce your name, Petula? You did it wonderfully, but then again, <laughs> you speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here we are. Uh, uh, thank you, Petula, for, for joining me today. Um, I'm really curious to know more about uh, you, your story, and to help uh, each other see you know, how a day in life looks uh, as a scrum master or as an agility enabler. Uh, but before that, um, you know, could you tell us, you know, what brings you, you know, your, to become a scrum master? What's your story? And please, I know that you have a beautiful story uh, with, uh, and you're an amazing storyteller. So could you share us a little bit? <laughs> About you. Okay, thanks. I did not know that about myself, uh, but I used to write when I was a kid. Like I was a bookworm and I used to write a lot. I had several unfinished books, but that's a whole other story. Um, I started my career in IT because I come from a family of IT people. My mom was a, you know, a tester from the time where you had, you know, like those punch cards. My dad was a programmer. My brother is in IT as well. So the whole family, it was, I was kind of doomed, even though I always wanted to be a psychologist. I ended up studying computer science. I've been a programmer for a very long time. Um, and back then being a developer, it was a very rich um, way of working. And I am very lucky. I've always worked in XP, so to speak. No one was really naming and say, I work on XP, but you know, we were heavy on pair programming, you know, quality above everything. Um, you only document what is necessary. Code has to be well written. So it is self-documenting. So I I have an experience that maybe is different than many people out there, as in I did not work that much in companies that are more structured so to speak it was always in an agile or lean environment um so i have the opposite problem i have to keep putting myself in the shoes of the people who never lived there that thing because for me it seems a little bit too obvious mm -hmm. so at some point and i don't know exactly when technology became uh became a secondary element of what i was doing and basically people and ways of working started to become more interesting somewhere near my 30s maybe some life crisis i don't know maybe my you know the the, the past psychologist wanted to come back at me and say no i'm here to stay but the fact is it, it was slowly uh, i was feeling a little bit more anxious and disappointed and you know in just working with code and just with the technology and eventually just by chance i accepted to be while I'm still a developer, a Scrum Master, uh, when I was working at Hybris, uh, it's a German company, they got bought by SAP and things changed, but back then they were super, super into Scrum, uh, very much, you know, by the book, but in a good way. Uh, they really had the mindset, and then I was developer and Scrum Master, and I really got hooked. Uh, so that was the beginning of how I, I came to be uh, the person I am today, I guess. Oh, awesome. So, so the, uh, where is, uh, the two, when you're talking about like hybrids and, and that, that first experience, where, where were you? Like in which country? I was here. Okay, so yeah, so basically I was born and raised in Brazil. I, I immigrated to Canada kind of late in the game. I was 29 when I came here. Um, and then I, not long later, uh, one or two years later, I was at uh, Hybris. And Basically, we were the only North American arm of Hybris back in 2012. And it was awesome because I was doing, even the technology was super exciting because it was a lot of cloud DevOps. Uh, so it was a dream come true from the you know development side of things. And from the culture side of things was even more awesome. People were so open, even though we had roles to, you know, to keep things organized, you have roles. But no one was necessarily, um, you know, like something needs to be done, something needs to be done. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, Jesus is the one who takes care of that. I'm not going to touch it. No, no, no. People would just jump in. There's a problem. You solve it. So it was a fantastic environment to work. So it was here in Montreal, but most of the company was in Poland and in Germany. Mm. So you were already distributed. 
Yes, so very your colleagues, much so. Your colleagues were around the world. Yeah. What, yeah, what year are we talking about? 2012, lots of Google Hangouts. Oh, really? Wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. So you were kind of uh, like the uh, the first ones doing that. The word, you know, the uh, kind of advanced for the era. Yeah, you know what? It didn't seem like that. It seemed so natural to all of us, but that's true. That talking to other people, it was so much that no, you have to be in the office. You can only collaborate when you're in the same physical space, which is awesome. You exchange that energy in person. We did travel a lot to each other's country to have that okay. in-person moment, but honestly, we even pair programmed on Google Hangout. Like it was really like that like we were wow. very much into yeah collaboration was key for that company and it was it was beautiful and you know you, you mentioned something that the, um, for people watching us speaking that uh, got me really curious about uh, you mentioned that at some point you, you know the the people factor got you and then you started like uh, you know walking this path uh, as a scrum master could you tell us more about it I'm really curious about it. Okay, uh, it is hard to explain. It had to do, um, so, so I read a lot and uh, I've always been like fiction and nonfiction. Um, and for for some reason I was into reading things that, you know, the book, um, so I was reading Drive, I was reading, you know, The Fifth Discipline, and they, some people think that those books are older or heavier, you know, but they actually are very eye-opening. Um, and I realized that many things in our ways, you know, in the day to day, they had to do more with how people interacted than necessarily if, you know, someone doesn't know the technology or doesn't, you know, it had to do with like a, I don't know necessarily how to work with you, or I'm not doing a very efficient use of my time because I'm spinning around the problem instead of, you know, working with problem statements and going one by one. So it really had to do with, uh, you know, in the day to day noticing that there were uh, things we could improve in how we would interact, how we would structure our work. Um, and that's very clear, I think. You cannot ignore that when you work remotely or in a distributed setting. Uh, you can get by when you're in person, but it felt, mm -hmm. I think it, it, I felt it strongly because it was really like that. So, uh, you know, we would sometimes join for a session and. We didn't reach any uh, conclusion and, and I was always the one like pushing for a little bit of structure, not necessarily to be square, but being structured. You know, you can, you can chat, converse, but usually in a work setting situation, you're trying to achieve outcomes here and there. So can you be upfront about what those are? And if I want to get there and I know I want to get there, uh, I have a better chance to conduct in the conversation to get there. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So not a lot of structure, but figuring out ways of uh, how can we make sure that our time together is really, you know, that there's a time for have fun and there's a time for having, you know, the work done and how do the times for having the work done can be better structured. So that's, I guess that's the, the part that really hooked me. How do we structure it without constraining, but giving a certain, you know, frame around that we can be free within those boundaries. I hope hmm. it makes sense. No, it makes sense. Well, at least to me. Uh, I, 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 that makes me wonder, you know, how does that connect with you, with your values? Why is that important for you? Um, I am, I like to prize myself in being very creative, but I do find that creativity requires a, a certain amount of organization. Um, I find, you know, funny when you see movies and people saying like, I'm waiting for the muse, the inspiration. Um, I don't have that. And yet I think I am creative. Uh, so I give myself structure, um, you know, and the structure and discipline, they, they, are, they are words that get, you know, a bad rap, but I, I find that unfair. Um, with structure and discipline, you basically have, you know, I have the space, which you know, have, has nice light. I have all the materials I need. Uh, when I come in here, boom, I, I focus instantly because I know where everything is. I know my way around. Um, and I know that, you know, every, every Mondays and Saturdays night, I, you know, I have a moment for doing such and such things. And on Wednesday, I, I do such and such things and they become like second nature. So, oh, yeah, yeah, a habit. And uh, uh -huh. yeah, and it, 
it's no longer a struggle. It becomes like a, you really turn the knob, like now I'm on this mode. And so, yeah, my values are a lot of uh, having some level of organization is really important to me. Hmm. Uh, it's interesting. So, uh, so what I'm hearing is like a, a discipline structure, uh, following some kind of organization, uh, habits, and the people factor, and that uh, ability to help people, uh, put at the service of people, the discipline or structures that you already have. Did I, I, did I get so. right? Yeah, I guess so. I, I think it's kind of like, imagine a white wall and imagine you put a bunch of post-its. Now post-it is the thing, right? So we put a bunch of post-its in it. Well, not now, not now in the confinement. Not now. <laughs> not yeah, <laughs> good maybe, one. maybe, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but not now. It's a, it's a good thing. Like a psychologist. Yeah. But so if you think about those, you know, those situations that Hello. everybody al associates with agile, like it's a wall full of post-its. It is basically a mess. So it is a mess. There's nothing in there other than colorful post-its. So you have to do something with them. You group them, you vote on them, you circle them around. You do. So it's the same thing I find. Like, can, can your mind and your work be a wall full of post-its? And can you, you know, give each of them a little bit of room so you know what this is about? So you can access your thoughts, your values, and yeah, <laughs> I guess that. Oh, I see. Yeah, so now, you know, so I'm, I'm going to uh, hook you up with a, a question that is, it's, you know, it's unrelated to this, because I saw your instruments before we started speaking. So um, it, got, it got me really curious about it. Well, <laughs> could you tell us about it? What, what is that? Hmm? What, what is your, you know, what, you are in, in which place at your home? Can you tell us a little bit about it? Oh, so I am. I'm really the... curious about it. It's just really curious. <laughs> I am in the music room here. Um, my my husband he has an electric drum and I have an electric piano, um, and we have other you know instruments, a small accordion. And we are not great players, but we we love music. And there's something about the vibe in here. Um, it's the lightning. It's the mood. You know, it's a place where we come to really open our minds and hearts. Um, so it ended up that we always have like a small desk and whatnot. And when we need to um, be creative or be very focused we come down here it has oh. the best acoustic and <laughs> so it's really it's really nice yeah music is, is very good now how how music uh, uh, helps you to do what you do and yeah, daily is there any connections yeah. uh, it, well, music is a huge part of who i am so i think in a way yes it helps um when i was younger i used to have singing lessons and guitar lessons and um and as i grew up so i remember as a developer i always needed music to focus and it would depend on the task at hand and it could be you know swedish death metal and it could be uh you know vivaldi it really depended on the problem i was solving um as of today i think i, I love music i even put music at work so i like music for timing sessions uh oh. you know like it, it's fun like you don't need to tell anyone that watch your clock for you know three minutes no you just put a music that lasts three minutes and while you're having fun with the music you're doing an assignment so i really like to introduce music to uh work sessions that i do and uh yeah music is everything to decompress to get inspired to sweat uh, music is important <laughs> Oh, cool. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't know that. And we have that in common. We, we could, uh, you know, jam? talk a little bit. Yeah, we're well, not jamming, but um, I, I do sing as in a choir. So uh, it's been a while, but... Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's good okay. to know. So, it's, uh, uh, you know, that uh, cue me to the next question, which is like, uh, I, um, I would love to know more about, let's say that uh, Petula goes to work. Could you tell us a little bit about a typical day and uh, as a scrum master, how do you, how does it go? What are the, uh, the challenges that you face every day to, and how do you add, bring that structure and that discipline to the teams that you work with? Could you mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about it? Okay, so currently uh, I have, you know, kind of like a, 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 I am what they like to call an agile coach. Now, 
I call it a misnomer because I am not necessarily coaching as much. Coaching is a, you know, a beautiful discipline that has its place. And not much room in most of the companies that are going through agile transformation. There's more room for teaching and mentoring in the sense that um, people have things to learn uh, and, and they want partners to help them learn and grow. Uh, and some people want some coaching, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So my main nine to five job that I used to go to, now I take it from home from my computer. And it's now I'm starting before nine and ending after five because it's okay. hard to... to um, yeah, because people, you know, they have their kids. And so we're kind of like working a little bit throughout the day. So having breaks at 3 p.m. <laughs> and work at 6, you know, so it's crazy like that. So basically my work involves um, helping teams, especially um, the Scrum Master and product owners and tech leads of those teams to um, better own their roles and find their own um, um ways of dealing with agility uh i mean there is there are so many frameworks out there and uh obviously because i work in a company that's doing what it's called an agile transformation which means that a, a big level of uniformization going on so there are things that hey you're free to to deal with your team in many ways but as a company these are the things we want to be doing or we want to be growing this kind of space. So there's a balance to strike there, which is helping those folks to learn more um, about their roles, how their roles can help in the transformation in the company, because it's not, you know, one or two coaches that do that. It is the people in the company that will do the transformation. So I see myself as this big bucket of general agile knowledge who comes in and, and basically chats with people and uh, we can we can work in several ways we can um, have an uh, assessment kind of uh, kind of uh, work which is uh, you invite me to your team I run a couple of uh, uh, sprints with you guys and understand how you guys work and then we discuss we do brief hey here are the things I think I'm seeing um, what do you what do you see uh what are the points that you want to work on if there is room for improvement because there always is but sometimes certain improvements are not the best timing for them it's not you know if you're already doing a uh, great estimation for example you're you're consistent you understand your work why would they keep improving on estimation when maybe i'm very unbalanced and no one speaks on the retrospective you know so hmm. so trying to get the teams more balanced first but instead of just trying to be high performing in one aspect while the yeah, other one they're they're really you know unbalanced so that's a huge part assessing and working with the scrum masters product owners and tech leads to jointly design you know a way forward uh, there is a lot of designing learning experiences as well so people who proactively want to take certain sessions on um let's say uh, understanding um uh, I think, you know, a, a big one is understanding work decomposition is, is a moment that for us is really important when we have from the portfolio all the way to our teams that we call squads. How do we understand our work? What is, you know, outcome based definition of work? You can think of user stories or not, but how do we represent all that breakdown in a way that makes sense uh, and that can be, you know, tracked and monitored throughout the whole company from the benefit realization to the you know nitty-gritty to the code oh. so that's a big one um, so developing learning experiences assessing uh, teams and, and situations and mentoring a lot of mentoring specific people in their specific roles yeah oh cool so so basically because you know that there is this big uh, mess that we as it is have created uh, uh, when naming our roles uh, <laughs> and you are uh, in my in the previous uh, session i had with uh, Pierre Cyril Danan, he was pretty much doing the scrum master role which is winning the team on the field helping the team uh, supporting the team to develop and now it's good to, to hear you because you are doing the the agile coach role which is like supporting uh, those people on the field to become to be better at the, what they do on their role. Did I get right? 
you get it fair, yeah perfect yeah so so that's pretty much uh, uh the the whole day what are the challenges that you that you experience something that you remember that uh, that you know uh, that's something that is appears often or whatever you comes to mind okay um i think there are a few things in there one is uh i am i i can only influence I have no authority. That's a beautiful thing. That's also very challenging because you can only influence people who are open to influence, right? It's not, you're not on a selling market. So even though we all know where the company wants to get, um, sometimes you will encounter people that are really set in their ways. Um, and I have to be um, humble and understanding to say, you know what, certain people, I will not be working with them now. Uh, there is there is no room for that. They are in a certain headspace. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the scarf model. And when you think about it, like probably that person is being challenged in all those instances of the scarf, you know, their status, their confidence, uh, what is in it for them in the transformation? What does that mean? Oh, that's a funny question because I, I, I can't understand that. But role wise, um, this role is disappearing, a project manager. It's such an important role. I cannot understand why someone would make it disappear but you know people are becoming either product owners or scrub masters or it might not necessarily be a fit they are not necessarily being told like hey do you want to be in this new role and here's mm -hmm. what this new role entails and uh, here's how you know you're going to operate in this new way so basically if no one is giving this is beyond my role right so it's, it has to do with hr and you know and policies on the company um as they transform, like what are they going to do with the, the, the people's careers and their, their aspirations and their dreams? So many of these people are facing the challenge of, hey, I wanted to be at a certain point in my career. Now I have completely shipped. Some of those folks, uh, it's exactly the pivot moment that I have to have the good conversations with them and helping them to make a choice, right? right? And uh, if they want to, you know, become Scrum Masters, what does that mean? Let's work together and, you know, let's make sure that you are, you are well equipped. Uh, but for others, it really is still their point of uh, maybe in the, in the stages of grief, they're still grieving. So it's really important. And I find it's, it's probably the main challenge I have is that as I go through influence, figuring out who, who wants some help, who doesn't. Hmm. Uh, and, and that is okay for those who don't want for now. Oh, so, so, so using the power of influence to get to help people. Yeah, if you have authority, you skip, I find a few steps, right? So people who have authority are the ones saying, you're no longer a project manager, you're now this thing. <laughs> and then, you know, and then, okay, thanks for consulting me. <laughs> so the, the beauty of influence is that you have to respect the person, right? Like uh, if I want to make, you know, I, I want to seduce you to this path here. First, I have to understand who you are. And then together we see, is there anything for me in there? I think there is. Let's see together if we find, you know, a way for you to still be, be confident and fulfilled in your job if you're following this path. And be very honest, sometimes even discovering that, mm, no, if the company really wants to get me there, I don't want to go at all. And mm -hmm. how do I help those people in that case? You know, so there are some difficult conversations like that too. Wow. So um, um, uh, thank you for, you know, sharing all these uh, details. Um, I'm, I'm really curious about the good and bad of your days. And sometimes we, we talk about the good, really good, but the, the bad, you know, could, could you tell us a little bit about it? And just uh, be, before jumping into it, we, we have uh, 10 minutes uh, left. Okay. So uh, just like uh, for us to, you know, because we like to talk. Okay, so let me so, uh, so think about it. Like, uh, uh, what are the goods of uh, what you do, and what are some of the bad? The good, I think, is a generalized sense of being in an infinitesimal part in the help. Uh, because in the end of the day, all the other people that I am kind of like pushing, they are the ones doing the jobs. So that's a, it's a beautiful feeling of being in the background, knowing you, you know, you, you were in there in a certain way, uh, even though you're not the one collecting the glory, don't need the glory at all. Uh, for me, it's just fine to know, you know, okay, I was there. I, I, I helped a little bit. The hard, well, it's definitely, um, 
well, the one that I mentioned is a big one. Um, the fact that sometimes, um, as you have discussions with the leadership, we have discussions on, um, well, you have to help such and such person, <laughs> but the person, you know, mm. this, doesn't doesn't want to be helped. That person, uh, it, it's kind of a little bit like the other one. The person is a certain um, headspace that there's probably not an easy way of collaboration there. So this is a little bit draining, but it's 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 important because sometimes that means that you have to deal with people who are in positions where they can um, derail uh, a whole team if they are not well equipped with the understanding of you know agile mindset and how they should you know, be, be repositioning themselves, how they're still very important leaders. They just operate in a more serving way other than, you know, an, an authoritative way. Um, so it really has to do with resistance that I found. They are very strong. They are never the same. Like I never have a, a recipe that I can use. It's really all about people. Hmm. So that, that makes me uh, think about any tips for those out there, like myself, doing uh, what you do uh, to deal better with the bad and to be uh, even better at the better? Oh boy, who am I to say this? But <laughs> one thing that I do, um, I think it is so important, so important to be self-critical like you have to really have the power to self-analyze um, understand your body language understand your own mindset uh, sometimes we enter we, we might enter a conversation can become an argument very easily so are you aware of where the conversation is going like in big transformations like those where we're going to you know touch certain uh, important spots for all people involved we have to be aware of ourselves of the environment extremely respectful um, and honor the you know all the knowledge and baggage that people are bringing in their careers because even though they are probably i'll be very honest many times they are not equipped with the knowledge to go in the new ways of working um, we cannot just come in blasting like I'm the savior and I know everything and you knew everything 30 years ago and now you don't know anything because that's also not true so it's so important to be aware of that. Yes, there are many differences, um, but uh, there is always a way for a partnership in there. And a huge part is working in ourselves to be able to, you know, you put your oxygen mask first, <laughs> then you help the others. So constantly putting my oxygen mask and checking, you know, checking in with myself. Mm, I like that. The oxygen mask, I'm gonna, you know, take it <laughs> from you, steal it from you. <laughs> hey, hey Patella, you know, it's, it, it's been a blast to have you here. Uh, be, before going, I have uh, two questions. Um, uh, you know, if you allow me. Yes. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Um, now, you know, it's been almost seven weeks here in Montreal um, since uh, the confinement started because of the COVID-19 uh, outbreak. Uh, how does that change uh, what you do? Any impacts, anything that you have noticed that have, uh, uh, you know, has changed since then? Yeah, I think, well, the most important is probably what everybody's experiencing is the, the technology setting change. So companies are, uh, you know, they're being quick in accepting the new technologies that allows for better collaboration, which is, which is great because a lot of the groups were already distributed, but working with subpar technology. <laughs> so they actually got a help in here and everybody now is in their shoes. So people who used to work in the big buildings and the big hubs, they now are seeing how is the life of those who are working from home, you know, many, many miles away. So there's a lot of empathy and improvement in the technology setting. Um, we are all reporting that we work more. Um, okay. It's been hard to disconnect because so you start the day a little bit earlier because someone, you know, needs to start before the kids go do their homework. So that's fine. You get a call, you know, 7.30, 8 a.m. Um, but then there's also someone who prefers at 6 p.m. because, you know, different reasons. So the, um, the shift got a little bit bigger, longer with breaks in the middle. Um, but I myself have been finding amazing the ability to focus because when you are in person in the office, there's the beautiful thing of connecting in person, but there is the disruption all the time that people that, you know, sometimes people just want to chat, nothing wrong with that. 
but it's it is hard sometimes there, there are days that you know it, it comes with the territory but there are days where there's a lot of chatting and like man I still have to go home and you know and work on these things um so I'm no longer hiding into you know into corners in the office to work because now you know people really need a reason to pick up the phone and, mm. and chat so, oh, cool. so the shift and the uh, you know the how do you spend your time during the day has, has changed and the empathy uh, between people uh that that's something that you know put everything into perspective yeah yeah kids doing cameo you know on there oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really fun it's fun yeah, yeah cats dogs and all that yeah yes um but, but you know I, I wanted to thank you petula for your generosity oh, today you. uh for allowing me to get to know each other a little bit more uh, I, I didn't know that you play instruments. That's a huge discovery. Uh, well, I'll let you know if you're passionate about it. Um, I, I didn't know that you were like you know, you come were you know from uh, computer science like I, like I do. So uh, thank you for being like uh, so generous and open uh, by explaining you know how your day um, it goes and what do you do and what makes you, you know, what brings joy to your life by doing that. Uh, I have a, um, we have a three minutes, so I, I just wanted to uh, uh, just, because I know that you are someone who laughs often, who <laughs> likes, uh, you know, having fun. <laughs> so uh, how do you bring a, a joy at work or fun? What do you do? Any tips? Smiling a lot, genuinely smiling a lot. Like it just it does wonders for you, for the crowd and the room. Not missing any opportunity for a joke, you know, like always go for the jokes. Um, and if you're in the position of facilitate of designing uh, experiences, always bring elements of fun that include, you know, body movement or you know, fiddling with things, uh, yeah, yeah, or having you know, have people shout. Uh, it is important, like connect really with the, uh, you know, with the very raw parts of the human. I think that's what I do. Mm, cool. Uh, get the, uh, you know, you get me inspired to do some <laughs> <adult> stuff. <laughs> um, Who you are? I know you're like that well, too. <laughs> you know, kind of. You know, uh, sometimes I'm kind of a uh, classy, <laughs> classy. <laughs> So uh, maybe I'll try some something. Um, anything before uh, we um, we end up the uh, this conversation? Anything that you wanted to say before leaving? Oh, I think it was an awesome opportunity. I think um, you know these challenging times. They are probably that's the beauty of it. It, it can always bring the worst of people, but it can always bring the best. And I think we're all, you know, in, in our community trying to bring the best. And, you know, just the fact that we are here chatting, like I literally have my coffee here and <laughs> it's so much fun. And you're, you know, locked in Montreal, I'm locked on the North Shore. Um, I think, yeah, there's an opportunity here to look at things with, you know, with gratitude, even in the difficult times, a lot of gratitude, a lot of, uh, hope and you know just, just just look into the positive because there's always the positive so um and thank you thank you so much i think this is an opportunity for us you know we just laughed here for almost yeah. a whole hour <laughs> so what a great way to kick start the day right so thank you ah uh, thank you petula so we're gonna you know end up the conversation here for, uh, with uh, you thank you for being awesome and you know keep bringing joy and you know your enthusiasm to these people, thank you for being here today. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, love.